Hey guys, as usual, please like and subscribe. Just feel free to share this video. It really helps the channel. And thank you to all my subscribers. We got to 50. That's really awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, I also would like to remind everybody that both trailers for Episode 8, The Hope in the Darkness, are now out. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. There's a lot of little tidbits in there, little things to uh, titillate as far as where it's going to go and where the story's going to go, and, and particularly with Ray and Finn. I think that's interesting stuff. But anyways, just let me know. And let's get into this. So here we are again. We're in this where it's just... Oh, boy. It, it, it You know, I've been saying all along that Disney's entire sort of theme since they took over Lucasfilm has been to, well, like they say in the in, in the sequels, you know, let the past die, kill it if you have to. And it just feels like every single thing about the original trilogy, every single thing about sort of the feel and the, e e e even the sequel trilogy, think about it. I mean, it's, they dubbed it as the Skywalker saga, but really the Skywalkers were really just sort of the the sidebar in the end to Palpatine and his, and his granddaughter. It was just... It's just everything they're doing. And so now here we go. <laughs> like, what are we retconning Vader for? Star Wars retcons Darth Vader's decision to kill Palpatine. Darth Vader's decision to kill Palpatine in The Return of the Jedi. Oh, awesome. Well, that's good. Because that needed retconning. You know, because we all had issues with... Right? I mean, didn't we? D didn't we all have issues with... Star Wars is retconned Darth Vader's decision to kill Palpatine in The Return of the Jedi. Because, you know, that was something we all had an issue with, right? Like, that was a big problem for Star Wars fans. Was, was how and why Vader killed Palpatine. Like, are you kidding me? It was a brilliantly, perfectly done ending. Awesome. Great. We loved it. The conversation that he has with Luke before they go and meet the Emperor uh, on Endor is probably my favorite scene in all of Star Wars. And, you know, where he talks about Luke making his lightsaber and all that stuff. And, and you can see and hear in his, you can hear in his voice and in his body language, you can see that even then he was already like, this is my kid. Like, you know, he wasn't himself. He wasn't his normal evil self. So this did not need retconning. But anyways. Okay, so... Darth Vader number 11... Oh, these comic books. Has added a new element. You remember the one a couple weeks ago with, this, with the with the Luke hand? That's how they're making snow clones. Oh, it's just... Oh. It's so terrible. There's just no creativity in their writing at all. Uh, Darth Vader 11 has added a new element to the Sith Lord's history that influences his trajectory as a character. While the Star Wars comics have been deepening connections between different stories within the galaxy, this newest revelation is a big one. Vader has been chronic. Darth Vader has been chronicling the titular character's discovery of his master secrets and plans. It has been. It has made many connections to the newest trilogy of films, revealing. What is hidden at Exegol, Palpatine's Star Destroyer fleet, and the Sith Eternal Present? What I was just talking about. All this crap. Again, everything. They're ruining all OT lore and Vader and everybody and Luke and everything because of their stupidity of the sequel trilogy and the dumb ideas. Instead of just pushing it to the side, saying it's alternate universe, and not having to do any of this. No, they're just going to keep piling on. Vader has been having visions, and his latest has made a startling change to Star Wars Episode Six: Return of the Jedi. So created by Greg Pak, Raphael, and... Darth Vader 11 shows more of a Darth Vader's venture onto Exegol. A vision Vader has at the end of the issue reveals that the decision he made in Return of the Jedi may have been a different one than fans initially thought. Oh, great. Awesome. After, Luke's re after Luke rejects Palpatine's offer to become his new apprentice, the Sith Lord decides to kill himself... To kill him instead, excuse me. Meanwhile, Darth Vader looks on as his son is electrocuted. Okay. Previously, it was believed that Vader is deciding in this moment if he can truly stop the Emperor and save his son, or if he should continue along the dark path he has been on. Stepping in would allow him to assume the role of the good man that Luke still believed him to be deep down. Vader stops the Emperor, saves his son, and in some ways becomes Anakin once more, as well as not as bad of a father since he gives his son a future. However, this vision shows that there was no reason for Vader to really hesitate unless he was more corrupt than initially thought. What? Vader's vision may have been of Luke in the attempt to bring him over to the dark side or to turn against the Emperor. This moment has continued to recur in his visions. The newest version, vision excuse me, has Luke telling his father that Vader knows he, that he can beat the Emperor. It tells him that destroying Darth Sidious is his destiny as it is foreseen. So if it is, Unless he... The Emperor... Oh no... Oh, no. So so basically, they put a vision of Luke 
a Vader vision of Luke telling him that he's going to be the Emperor. So it wasn't a decision in the moment or or in that short span of time from Endor up to the Emperor and he wanted to save his son. No, now it's just his his he was meant to kill him no matter what. Awesome. Thanks, Disney. Thank you for ruining another massive, massive part of the plot. A massive thing that everybody loved. And every, and it, it, I, essentially, I look at it like this. Um, George wrote it as a, a, a story about a family, right? And then Disney Lucasfilm buys it. They say they're going to make the, the, the final three movies. And they, they, they market it as the Skywalker saga. But... It's not, they are taking the family out of Star Wars completely. Like, they, they don't want families. And maybe these people don't have families. I don't know. I don't know if they just don't have kids or if they don't want kids or if they're just, a, I don't know. I don't know. But they're just taking, like, that whole scene is about family. And now it's not anymore. Now it's about power. And that's sad because Vader did not, you know, throw Palpatine down the shaft because he wanted Palpatine's power. That was his initial thought. Him and his son were going to take, but because inside he loved his son, he he does what he does to the Emperor. It has nothing to do with him wanting power. And in fact, uh, what he did essentially helped kill him, right, to save his son. So it wasn't about power. Now they're making it about power. Uh, however, Vader. Okay, the apprentice kills the master, assuming the role of master afterwards. However, Vader never takes this second step. He is shown disagreeing with his master regularly and trying to figure out his own path, but he never tries to ascend to a higher rank. Ugh. Vader watches Palpatine die. Suddenly pauses shortly after he shows no and proceeds to destroy the Emperor. However, if he knows he can destroy the Emperor, he knows he can save his son, yet still hesitates. In this moment, Vader may not be wondering if he should save his son, but if he should definitively destroy his master. Blah. He has shown no aspiration to take the Emperor's place in the galaxy or to rule the Sith, the Sith Lord, and though he disagrees with Palpatine's frequently and ultimately defeats him, Vader is highly dependent on the dynamic they share. Vader may not have had the right heroic choice to kill Palpatine, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, another one ruined, folks. Another one ruined. Uh, they just keep doing it. They can't stop themselves. They just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. This one seems pointless. Like okay, the other ones, the stupid Luke hand and the and the all the crap they're doing to try to justify Palpatine coming back and the cloning and all that nonsense. Okay, fine, whatever. But you know that's stupid and and it's terrible and it's it's garbage and it's and it's based on garbage writing and 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 I'm bothered by that. But I can at least see them trying to explain this nonsense. But this is totally unnecessary. They're just doing everything they can to ruin all the lore, all the stories, the family stuff, everything. It's just ruin it all. Oh, George, why did you sell to these people? Why did you sell to these people? These people do not care about your thing. They care about themselves. They're going to retcon everything. They're going to ruin everything. Now I'm hearing rumors that there's there, there's possibly going to be a, a marriage aid show. Yeah, let's see them do that. Let's see them see what they do. They're going to ruin that too. They've just, they've just stomped on it, guys. Uh, it's really sad. And so for me, I, I, they don't, they get none of my money. Like, I'm not, I'm not giving them any money. Like they, if they're gonna just keep doing this, you know, it's one thing to write a really horrible sequel trilogy and a whole bunch of stupid shows and comics to try and justify the stupidity of the writing in those in those movies. But it's another thing now to just totally stomp on the OT. Luke and Last Jedi is bad enough, and and that stomps on him. But it's in a separate trilogy. I don't have to watch it. I don't even have to believe it exists if i don't want to um this is just terrible uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section uh, are you fans of this like just continuously retconning everything and ruining everything and e even the original trilogy now let me know uh, and again as usual like and subscribe thanks again for the support guys and have a good day